Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week, the same days. In today's video, this is going to take us well in towards the end of uh, January, actually. We're not going to quite go to the end of the month, but we're going to go um, up towards the end of January. I think go to around 26th, 27th of the month. So, um, we're going to have a lot of quiet weather this week, but I think next week, increasing signs that the Atlantic is going to strike back and it's going to turn quite wet and windy uh, at times through the course of next week with a return of an Atlantic-driven pattern. Uh, no sign of anything particularly cold coming up, although at the end of the week and into the weekend, I think the south will turn quite cold. We've got a real cold push uh, coming across most of Europe again this week. We're just on the periphery of it once again. Um, and it's going to be chilly, I think, in the south and southeast through much of this week, actually. But it'll be towards the end of the week when we start to get rid of the cloud and get more and more sunshine, um, funny enough. Uh, with that, we're going to find the temperatures really dropping and uh, I think Friday and Saturday could be really quite cold, possibly into Sunday as well. And that's particularly so for the south and the east. But after that, the Atlantic coming back um, next week. That's the general idea. So I'll show you the detail in a second. Before I get on with that, just to say about the ads, it's the articles on the pages. Have a browse through widgets and click through links. If there's any articles that are interested in your having space website, thanks very much for doing that. We'll just start off with Central England temperature. We're at the halfway point of the month now. So uh, provisionally... We stand at 5.0, which is an anomaly of 1.5 degrees above average. I say that's provisional up to yesterday, 15. So despite the cold snap that we had at the end of last week into weekend, we've not really reduced the temperature very much. That's because the nights weren't particularly cold. We did have a couple of quite cold days with temperatures just 2, 3 degrees or so. But um, the nights, generally not all that frosty. And at uh, this time of year, to get a significantly cold um, C2 returns, you have to get uh, frosty nights. So we might actually see the um, temperature dropping there at the end of this week more than it did during the cold snap, because I think we will get two or three really quite frosty nights at the end of the week and into the weekend. Anyway, it's turning out to be a mild of an average month. I suspect uh, last week we was thinking that Possibly we would uh, come out with a cold and average month, but uh, because this week's sort of freezing temperatures are being restricted onto the continent, um, and then next week the Atlantic is coming back, I suspect overall we are going to finish up with a milder than average uh, January. I don't think it'll be very significantly mild, but I certainly think we could be around half degree to a degree above average when we come to the end of the month. These are 500 bit of our height anomaly flow charts for next week to 10 days. Then it's going to be taking us up to around the 26th, 27th of uh, January. So going towards the end of the month. Um, got the ECDF here on the top and the GFS, which I'll look at in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 bit of our 8,000 feet is an area in the atmosphere. High pressure, low pressure, you drag by a jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to high pressure and blue extrapolates to low pressure. So um, quite a complicated uh, height anomaly for the um, next uh, 7 to 10 days. The main ridge is this area of high pressure up here over Canada. That's going to be delivering a lot of very mild weather to Northern America and uh, Canada in the coming few days. I'll show you the temperature anomaly for them in a moment, but it's going to be really mild across many parts of America. So it isn't one of those winters where America is in the freezer and we are suffering with uh, mild conditions. They are pretty mild this winter as well, though they did get some colder weather a couple of weeks ago. Um, back into Europe, so we've got this deep trough here setting in across Scandinavia and northeastern parts of Russia, so probably another cold push coming down into western uh, Russia and northeastern Europe. Um, with the jet stream doing something like that. Closer to home, we're under this very weak ridge here from the main high that's actually centred in the uh, northwestern part of the Atlantic Ocean over here. Generally, it's an Atlantic flow that's coming in, uh, albeit quite a weakened Atlantic flow uh, again. So, um, I mean, we're not going to see stormy conditions, but I don't think, in the uh, 7 to 10 day time frame. Um, but it will be turning more unsettled. The Atlantic will be coming back to some uh, degree. The uh, GFS is a little bit more unsettled, rather different. We've got this trough here around the northwest of the UK. And then we've got the ridge, which is extending through Spain and going into central parts of Europe. Again, this big ridge here over northern and northeast parts of America. Um, and the jet stream is doing something rather like that. So it's a slightly stronger jet stream on the GFS and therefore a little bit more unset unsettled but they're both sort of bringing in an Atlantic type flow there as we go through into next week 
Bees of a GFS temperature precipitation ensemble. So next couple of weeks, the red line here is a 30-year temperature average. So at the moment, we're around average to slightly cooler than average with the upper air temperatures. Uh, but next week, we're lifting them up. It's going milder next week as the Atlantic-driven pattern starts to take over. Precipitation also very much showing uh, the difference. So we have got some rainfall at the moment from a dying weather front. But actually, through the rest of this week into weekend, loads of dry weather. But then all of a sudden, you'll see that the precipitation spikes really come back there in the closing day of uh, January. So this is the 1st of February just here and uh, so this is kind of the final week of January there and it looks very unsettled. Big precipitation spikes. Long time since we've seen one of these ensemble charts looking as unsettled as that as many rainfall spikes. So uh, at the very least it looks like we'll be turning pretty wet for the final stages of January and also probably quite mild. Temperature anomalies look like this from the 16th through to the 24th of January. Again, notice the vast majority of Europe is looking very, very cold. This time, the cold anomalies are particularly through France and Germany. Some really biting cold weather there. But whether you're over in Portugal here to um, the Black Sea, which is over here, most central, southern uh, eastern parts of Europe coming out very significantly colder than average. The northwest of Europe is milder, so Scandinavia uh, looks mild. It's been a mild winter there. That continues. But the British Isles, it's a bit of a north-south split. The southern part of the country is very close to this really cold air. So the temperature anomaly is actually coming out a little bit colder than average for England and Wales in the week ahead. Scotland and Northern Ireland coming out a little bit milder than average. Remember, these probably turn colder um, as we get towards the weekend, and then next week they will turn significantly milder. Look how mild it is across much of America. This is temperature normally for the United States, and uh, you can see Canada as well at the top there. Uh, and it just looks very, very uh, mild indeed, really mild winter. Of most central and eastern parts of America, or mild January, across many central eastern parts of America. It's colder out to the west, as it has been. Those western states can be under uh, cold and average, but the, the populated areas over in the east and through the Midwest, it looks very mild indeed. So it isn't, let's say, one of those winters where America is in the freezer and we are suffering as a result with mild Atlantic-driven conditions. It's a different pattern this year compared to the last two or three winters, albeit we are still coming out um, milder than average. In the west of Europe, in the east of Europe, it's been a very cold winter, of course. Precipitation anomalies uh, for Europe for the 16th, 24th of January, looking drier than average again through most parts. I would expect these to start trending wetter, this week, uh, as we bring next week into the time frame. So this is GFS for Friday, and high pressure is going to be dominating the weather then. The cold air is across the continent, and some of that is filtering in across the south and the southeast. That continues into Saturday when we're drawing up a south southeast wind. That will be drier, so we'll get rid of all the cloud, I think, that's going to be plaguing us through much of this week. We'll find the sun coming out, but conversely, the temperatures will lower, especially at night, some quite frosty nights coming up at the end of the week and into weekend. Um, these are the dew points showing that most parts of Europe are locked into the freezer, and some of that is getting in at the end of the week and into the weekend across England and Wales, although the north still looks relatively mild. And then on Sunday, we start to bring this area of low pressure in off the Atlantic. You have to watch out, but it's coming into quite cold air. Um, so it could do something a little bit wintry in the east. That uh, cold air hangs on long enough. But once that gets out of the way, then we go into the Atlantic flow next week. So we bring another area of low pressure through the country through the first part of next week. That does turn the wind into the north which could bring some colder, wintry-type showers into Scotland. Um, and then after that, through to the middle part of next week, low pressure really deepening in the Atlantic Ocean. Turns wet and windy there on Thursday, 26th of January, which is day 10. And a really deep area of low pressure, 945 millibars in the central Atlantic, is the driver of that wet and windy weather. And then that sets us up for a required unsettled spell through towards the end of January. Low pressure is really pushing through. So quite a bit of rain. And uh, temperatures on the mild side, although by that point, which is Saturday 28th of January, winds have started to go a little bit more towards the northwest again. But it looks very Atlantic driven there for the final week of the month. 
Um, the E7WF again, very similar, high pressure dominating on Friday and into the weekend as well. Could, uh, could well be dragging in cold air to the south, bringing frosty nights, probably quite cold days as well. Uh, then we go through to next week, and this ridge is gradually being broken down as low pressures coming in off the Atlantic. Um, and we do turn winds into the north again for the middle part of next week, very briefly, before the next low pressure looks like it's rolling in. Um, this is, as we saw in the high dominant, the ECWF is not quite as unsettled, though, for this final week of January as the GFS. So it might be that the GFS is going a bit over top with the zonal signal. It often does that. But the trend for both of the models, really, they differ on the detail and extent, but the trend for both models is the last week of January. More wind and rain starting to come in off the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and finally, in terms of what's happening in the stratosphere over the North Pass, we've been talking about this over the past few days. The GFS model is picking up on a, on a potential stratospheric warming uh, over the North Pole at the end of January. This is the latest um, from the website midfield.fr. So this is 24th of January, where you see we have already got some warming taking place through uh, Siberia. The cold blue colours there, that's what the blue colours are the cold stratospheric temperature over the pole. They're still there. Um, as we run through into the closing days of January, let's see what happens in another GFS run is going for another major warming. The red colours turning up there across Siberia um, on the 28th, 29th of January. Remember, these are stratospheric temperatures. They aren't surface temperatures. They're up in the top layers of the atmosphere. And that's starting to head in towards the North Pole. So as we run up towards the end of this particular run of the GFS, again, a major sudden stratospheric warming event. Looks like it's taking place. It's pushing in towards the North Pole as well. The yellow colours are displacing the blue colours over the top of the pole. So, again, GFS very consistently at the end of January is going for this major southern stratospheric warming, starting over Siberia and then pushing into the North Pole by the end of January into the start of February. Where that takes us after that, as I explained yesterday when I went into this in a lot of detail in yesterday's video, you can find it on the catch-up page. You haven't seen it yet. Where that takes us remains to be seen, because what happens after sudden stratospheric warming is that you uh, reduce the polar vortex a lot. In fact, in some cases, you can destroy the polar vortex uh, for a while anyway after a sudden stratospheric warming. And it's kind of like putting a bomb into the uh, polar vortex and watching the whole thing sort of explode. And where all the pieces finish up um, is where it's very uncertain, because... There will almost certainly, I would have thought, if it comes off like that, there will almost certainly be some sort of northern blocking as a result a few weeks down the line. It normally takes two or three weeks to start to filter down into the troposphere, which is the layer of the atmosphere where weather is taking place, 500 millibars. So it takes a while to feed down, but it will, I would have thought, if we get that sort of sun stratospheric warming at the end of January, feed down to some sort of blocking signal. But where the piece is all um, falling into place, where the puzzle, jigsaw puzzle sort of goes together, remains to be seen. And we might find ourselves, just our luck really, way this winter's gone, we might find ourselves on the mild side of the blocking somewhere else, getting very cold from those blocking highs. And of course, we've got to get the sudden stratospheric warming in place. It's still a long way off. It's the end of January. Around the 28th, 29th is consistently the signal to do it. So uh, we've got to see whether we do actually get that. Um, we'll know more by the end of the week, I would have thought, where we are actually going to pull off a sudden stratospheric warming. And then all eyes will be on where uh, what the atmospheric response is uh, as we go through into February. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.